And I was like, yo, what's up? He was like, yeah, man. You know, that nigga Wolf was shaking, had, you know, dude shook in there, man. You know what I'm saying? But they took care of what they were supposed to take care of. It's a natural reaction. They start mixing the facts in. They put their story with your story. Like, that's really what happened. Women from buddies, fellas. Fellas from buddies, women. It's a trait that's passed down from old heads right now to they kill you. The Gene Deal Show. Cooking in conversation. Now... We're going to talk about, you know, how Bad Boy came into the whole Harlem and the whole, uh, uh, um, the whole Harlem scene. Now, this is how Bad Boy came into the Harlem scene. When Puff got fired by Andre Harrell, you know, like I said before, you know, he was on suicide watch and deferred. You know, for some some odd reason, he loved this kid, man. You know, he had mad love for Puff. And, uh, you know, I still today don't know why. You know, but it, it is what it is. So uh, he would tell us, you know, you know, this kid about to commit suicide, man. We got to watch him, you know. And, you know, you at the time, Eddie F. from Heavy D and the Boys who was one of the top producers, was, you know, helping Puff by paying his car note. Tim Dog was doing the same thing. Tim Dog was the guy who was over Mecca. Tim Dog was over the Lost Boy. He had the Lost Boy. He could have been at Isla Records or Arista first. It was one of them. But then he became the president of, uh, I think, Electric or something like Electric Records or something like that. Because it was a lot of different record companies back at the time. It was a lot of different record companies back at the time. So he became, uh, Tim Dog became one of the presidents. He the one who had uh, the the Lost Boys. So he was another one of the cats who were paying, um, you know, Puff Wren and his Cardinal. Because back then he had like this little white Volkswagen Cabaret with the uh, top off of it and stuff like with the, uh, with the uh, convertible rag top or whatever like that. So... Uh, they were taking care of him. So now, Wolf, you know, who was a part of Butt Naked, that was Buck, L, and uh, Wolf. Buck, L, and Wolf. Now, they all had this little crew stuff like that, and they was throwing parties. So now, Puff becomes, they want to be investing to Bad Boy. Because, you know, when he left, he took Craig Mack, he took uh, and uh, Biggie with him. Man, I wish I could see some of that stuff. He took Craig Mack and he took Biggie with him. But he didn't have the money for the production. He didn't have the money for the um, the, uh, the the put in Big Pocket. He didn't have money put in Craig Pocket. But these guys, uh, Buck and Elnum, had their money because they had, quote, unquote, a limousine company, <laughs> you know, a limousine company, you know, that's, that's what they said they were doing, but they was actually hustling. And, and, uh, this is true to facts because they got nine, six, they got, was it nine, 16 to life sentences under the, uh, federal guidelines. And each one of them, they just got pardoned by Obama last year. And uh, Buck went to live with Puff. So this is this is true statement. And then the reason I know how what they were doing outside of that, and I'm not just talking because I got caught up in a situation with him and Wolf. Now, my brother, my you know my god brother, you know from another mother, a one since day one, stole that from BK Fame. Uh, he told me, yo, Gene, we was on the block. We was on 112th Street. We was on the block. He said, yo, Gene, I need you to roll with me. And I was like, yo, what's up? He said, man, you got to take every light. And he said, I got the ticket. Don't worry about it. So we jump in my truck and we, we flying. We headed up to, uh, we on 112th Street. We on 112th Street. So we headed up into uh, uh, Undercliff in the Bronx. I'm flying. I get to dig and get off on 179th and swing around 179th, 
Go, go up Segwit till I get to Undercliff. Boom. We get there. And I was like, yo, and he still ain't tell me what was up. I was like, yo, man, what's wrong? What's going on, man? He said, yo, Gene, don't worry about it. You can stay down here. I said, no, nah, I'm going with you, man. He said, yo, go in you want to, man. It's all right. He said, I said, yo, I'm rolling with you. He said, what's up? So we go up in this building over on Undercliff. And guess who coming down the hallway? It was Wolf and, and Buck. They had two shopping bags. And they were left. They was dressed to the teeth. They had on minks and everything, dressed to the teeth. And I was like, yo, I'm looking at him. And then they just started. He said, oh, man, what the fuck is going on, man? He, they, they start laughing. He said, nah, 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 man. Everything good. Everything good. And um, I kind of knew what was going on at that time. But he didn't say anything to me. But then when we went, you know, when he went, in the, when he, when he went into the apartment, you know what I'm saying? And, and then he came back out. He came out with a big-ass duffel bag. And I was like, yo, what's up? He was like, yeah, man. You know, that nigga Wolf was shaking, had, you know, dude shook in there, man. You know what I'm saying? But they took care of what they were supposed to take care of. I said, yeah? He said, yeah. So then he said, Jing, I need you to do me another favor. And I said, what? He said, I need you to uh, count this money up for me. And I said, yeah, all right, man, what is it? We need to talk about money. He said, yeah, yeah, I need to count this money for me. Yo, it's like a hundred and some thousand dollars in that joint. I was like, oh, shit. Shit is crazy. So then uh, he said, yeah, man. You know, Wolf had them all shook up in there and everything like that. I said, yeah. He said, but everything is cool and everything. And that was like the uh, second time I met Wolf. Uh, that was like the second time I met Wolf after a couple of incidents, after the couple of situation we had. So then again, that's how I knew that they just didn't really have a limousine company. You understand? And they was doing other things. And then that's when they got caught in the, um, in Virginia with that whole trial shit, stuff like that. And they, they, they did their sentence and they did their time and stuff like that. So Bad Boy actually got started with their money butt naked. You understand? So when you hear those stories and they don't talk about butt naked, they don't talk about Kirk Burroughs, they don't talk about a lot of other things like that, you know, that's where they get the the felonious shit. Cause it is no it's no different from a lot of other company when like when people say that they sold weed to start their company or um they say um Rockefeller did the same thing. You know, that's how guys was getting their money. Then these guys in the streets was trying to, you know, clean their money up and get to a whole different life and a different livelihood. Now, uh, when he then go and he, uh, he get into the Clyde Davis thing, it was already, you know, Buck and Elton was already you know, in jail now. But he had used their money, but Wolf wasn't in jail. So now Bucknell had to be taken care of while they was in jail. And now they got now they got this this, this legal money. But Wolf had to use his money, you understand, to send Buck family money or or, or L family or L or whatever they needed in jail or every those people that's part of that crew. Wolf was using his money to make sure. And then when L was in jail, Corey was still out on the run. Corey's on the run for about six years. You understand? How you think he stayed on the run for that long? Who you think helped keep him on the run? It was only it wasn't only Wolf money at that time. It was the bad boy money then. Cause we used to see uh Buck show up at concerts and places, and he was given a paper bag a lot of times. But, you know, all that shit is over with now. You know, he with his man Diddy. They, you know, they live in company together, co-mingling in the same home. So, he good now. No, I had a conversation with Tupac. Uh, uh, when, when, when Pac had a, uh, uh, was, was, him and Puff was talking, we was in uh, uh, the Roxy. 
it was a big concert that and him and Puff had a conversation and they were talking and Pac put a cigarette in his mouth and a nigga just lit a cigarette. I was just like, what kind of shit is that? Nigga lighting your cigarette. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I thought Pac was a little eccentric when I, when I first met him.